welcome students to today's lecture before going to discuss some new topics in today's lecture let me quickly summarize what i have discussed in the previous lecture so hope you are following the sequence which i am trying to follow in the lecture initially i have started with the observational astronomy some important features and then selected general properties of the universe as part of that i have given you the salient features of elemental abundance curve hubble's law remnants of 2.7 kelvin hr diagram which gives you idea about the relation between luminosity temperature color so like this parameters of large number of stars in the universe and then i started discussing thermonuclear reactions because nuclear reactions in the stellar plasma it's a plasma right it's a plasma of ions within the stars they are all charged entities mostly okay they get energy because of the thermal motion right the energy possessed by these ions is basically because of the thermal motion and where from this temperature is coming into picture so when these ions are undergoing a gravitational contraction after certain stage the gravitational contraction leads to the development of thermal pressure and thereby in that region temperature will increase and because of that the ions will get kinetic energy and they will undergo nuclear reactions because of this we termed these reactions as thermonuclear reactions and i started with the basics of the nuclear reactions like atomic q value nuclear q value when the binding energy correction term should be considered or not all those things i have discussed then i started discussing the concept of cross sections of the nuclear reactions that means the probability for nuclear reaction to happen under what conditions cross section will be more and less that depends on various parameters like energy and the nature of interaction and i have also given you important some uh, numbers considering some examples regarding the cross section considering weak force strong force and electromagnetic force so you should understand how the cross section is going to change because of the interaction mechanism involved in the reaction that depends on the nature of the particles in the reaction entrance channel one of the important goals of this course is to know the abundance evolution of the elements why one element is having more abundance and why some elements are less abundant how to know this how researchers uh, get an idea about this for that we need to know the number of reactions that take place more number of reactions more production of the elements and more abundance roughly if we say so less abundance or more abundance depends on the number of reactions taking place and of course the number of reactions taking place depends on the number of particles undergoing the interaction only that one no in the last lecture i have uh, shown you it also depends on the cross section of the nuclear reaction and also the velocity of the nuclear reaction i mean velocity of the particles okay the product of number densities and the reaction rate so this is what i have discussed in the previous lecture in today's lecture let me continue the discussion okay so as part of recap a recap i have discussed things which i have covered in the previous lecture and in today's lecture what i am going to cover is reaction rate reaction rate for neutron induced reactions and reaction rate for photon induced reactions here i am referring to gamma rays okay and then depending on the time availability i will discuss the concept of mass fraction all right so i repeat the goal of today's lecture is to understand how to mathematically calculate the reaction rate if the reactions are induced with neutrons and with gamma rays before that i'll spend some time to explain the salient features of the equations which i have covered in the last lecture okay so continuing the discussion on cross sections of the nuclear reactions and rate of this nuclear reactions please remember we have used maxwell 
Boltzmann distribution, is not it? Maxwell Boltzmann distribution for the velocity distribution of the particles. And then by using the number densities, we have written expression for the reaction rate. What was that? Initially, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution was expressed as 2 by root pi 1 by k t to the power of 3 by 2 root e e to the power of minus e by k t d e. So, basically velocity has been converted into energy. So, we can write this as p of e d e is equal to right. So, you are aware of the well known formula for Maxwell distribution in terms of velocity right. So, kinetic energy of m v square and velocity from that we converted into energy ok. And we have seen that the velocity is maximum I mean the velocity distribution has a maximum at 2 k t by m 1 2 that is reduced mass fine. And from this we have written expression for reaction rate per particle pair when one nucleus 1 and a nucleus 2 undergoes nuclear reaction ok. So, this has been represented as 0 to infinity ok e sigma as a function of e e to the power of minus e by k t and d e. So, this is one term I have written and second term was 8 by pi m 1 2 square root right. Now, it is a time to see how the energy e to the power of minus e by k t they will decide the variation of reaction rate when we plot with respect to the temperature ok. And one more term is also here that is 1 by k t to the power of 3 by 2. So, this is the reaction rate per particle pair when E is given in M E V ok that we can write by converting into uh, numerical values right. And what was the expression when we try to express this E in M E V and T as T 9 that is uh, giga Kelvin thus that looks like N A sigma V 1 2 3.72 into 10 to the power of 10 divided by T 9 to the power of 3 by 2 and masses of the nuclei in terms of A m u if I want to write then this expression comes into picture and remaining the term integral E sigma E e to the power of minus 11.605 E divided by T 9 ok d e whose units are centimeter cube per mole per second. So, this is basically numerical expression numerically we can obtain this for the reaction rate per particle pair. So, we are multiplying the sigma v with Avogadro number this is the standard representation of reaction rate ok. So, we can see that this reaction rate critically depends on the sigma cross section ok. Now, if I want to plot k t to the power of minus 3 by 2, where is that? Here ok, k t to the power of minus 3 by 2 and e is here ok and e to the power of minus e by k t. So, if I plot k t to the power of minus 3 by 2 e into e to the power of minus by k t versus energy, then at 3 different scenarios I am trying to plot this and it gives some interesting feature ok. And I am plotting energy in M e v and here I am writing k t to the power of minus 3 by 2 energy and e to the power of minus e by k t. At low energies you can see it goes like this ok. This is uh, the case when 15 mega kelvins say sun interior. Sun is an always an attractive uh, entity to understand the energy production and also stellar evolution because sun is a part of you know uh, stars. 
So within the sun interior, we know it is about 15 mega kelvins. And at that particular temperature, listen carefully, how the major factor in the reaction rate that is k2 to the power of minus 3 by 2 which has the term temperature and energy and e to the power of minus e by kt. So, overall we have energy and temperature in these parameters, right? So, together this quantity when we try to plot with respect to the temperature, sorry, uh, energy, then how it looks like? At low energies, at low energies, the factor increases linearly, the factor increases linearly and it, it reaches a maximum at a value of kt, right? You are aware of this kind of distribution. So, it looks like this, at t is equal to 15 mega Kelvin, you can see that kt is equal to 0 0.0013 MeV, okay? And then, so you can say that like uh, 1.3 keV, okay? You can say 1.3 keV. And if I go for more temperature, then it looks like this. This is for NOVA, t is equal to 0.3 g k t equal to point th 3 k. So, basically I am talking about the NOVA example. Okay? Here also for low energies it increases linearly, then the k t the maximum value corresponds to 0 0.026 MeV. So, it has increased from 1.3 keV to 2 up to 26 keV. Now, if I go to supernova, then the variation something looks like this. The temperature is about 5 giga kelvins okay? and the value of k t is given as say 430 kV that means 0.43 MeV, 0.43 MeV. So, this is how the factor in the expression looks like when it is plotted with respect to E. Fine. Now, at different temperature scenarios like sun's interior, nova and supernova. So, at different temperature scenarios, you, you are having different kt values. So, how the plot of kt versus temperature will look like? And for the sake of convenience, I will consider the temperature in terms of giga kelvins. That means, T9, that means temperature is 10 to the power of 9 kelvins, how it looks like. Okay? So, numerically you can get this kind of value and graphically if I want to express, so it looks like this. Okay? So, when you plot k t in terms of MeV and temperature giga kelvins, so if you start from 0 0.01, 0 0.1 and 1 logarithmic scale 10 and starting from 10 to the power of minus 3, 10 to the power of minus 2. 10 to the power of then minus 1, then 10 to the power of 0, you will get an expression, a linear relation kind like this. Okay? And this relation, if you fit, this linear relation, if you fit, it looks like k t is given as 0 0.086173 t9. See, remember my students, t9 denotes, if t9 is equal to 1, it means 10 to the power of 9 kelvins. Okay? T9 is equal to 2 means 2 into 10 to the power of 9 kelvins like this. Okay? And of course, this kT is in MeV. So, you need to be careful the numbers which are using for T9 and the units of this kT. All right? So, this is how one can understand the salient features of reaction rate equation when two nuclei are non-identical and at a different temperature scenarios, how the factor of k t to the power of minus 3 by 2, whatever the term is there, how it varies with respect to the energy. So, it is clear that the maximum occurs at k t value. I am, I am spending enough time on this because in future, maybe at least 4 to 5 lectures later, this term, this distribution is going to play a very important role to understand what range of energies should be considered if we want to perform an experiment in earth's laboratory. In stars, nuclear reactions are happening at various energies, 
all types of energies, but majority of the energies are happening within majority of the reactions are happening with what energy range we have to identify. Otherwise, in all energy ranges available within the star, if you want to perform the experiment, it is quite difficult. Moreover, it makes no sense because not all energy ranges gives equal probability for the production of the elements in the universe, right? That is what we have understood when we say cross section depends on the energy. At the same time, velocity distribution also is there and for each velocity cross section is also depending and cross section is also changing. So, considering these two parameters for time being, it is suffice to understand that the maximum is occurring at the value of kt. Whether at this energy kt more reactions are taking place, that we have to see. I repeat the question because I am going to answer this after a few lectures. My question, listen carefully, whether the energy corresponding to k into t, k is Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature in kelvins, whether at this particular energy most of the nuclear reactions are taking place or not. To understand this, this kind of mathematical background is very important. Okay? And also I have shown you how k t changes with t if t is in giga kelvins. All right? And after this let me discuss uh, uh, something else. Okay? Like I have said in the initial part of the lecture, how to write the rate of the reactions if they are induced by neutrons. Why so special? I mean, what is the point in uh, considering the neutron induced reactions? Different types of particles are available within the stars. Why only neutrons? Because in the elemental abundance curve, if you remember elements beyond iron, elements beyond iron, majority of them are because of the neutron induced reactions. Of course, within the star, neutron and another nucleus, when reaction take place, there is nothing like one is projectile, another is a target. That is fine. But that kind of scenario, as I said many times in previous lectures, cannot be created in Earth's laboratory. So, you have to consider one entity as projectile and another entity as target. And the reaction between projectile and target, that and data analysis by converting into center of mass system can give us the final idea about the energy produced within the star. Of course, there are many steps in between them. Okay. So, now elements beyond iron in the elemental abundance curve, majority of them have been synthesized because of the neutrons. And where from these neutrons are coming? From previous reactions. So, neutrons produced in the previous reactions, they are acting as the seeds and they are inducing the reactions. Neutrons which have no mass and no, which have no charge but having mass, they will they are going to play a major role and in the elemental uh, abundance and synthesis of elements, neutrons play a very important role. So, that is the reason we need to understand mathematical expression for neutron induced reaction rate. There is nothing uh, like we have to start from scratch. Already we have written some general expression for the reaction rate equation. We have written something general, right? by considering two entities as non-identical, which has a cross section and other terms. What change we have to do in those, in the discussion I have, I did in the previous lecture, so that we can get the expression for neutron induced reaction, that let me write down. Okay? There are few points which I will discuss in detail when I discuss the elemental, uh, I mean production of elements beyond iron, but for time being. I would like to say that the cross section in terms of neutrons is not like uh, charged particles for which mainly we have written the previous expressions. So, for neutrons one has to consider the average cross section, why average? All those things I will discuss in due course. Okay? Okay. So, for time being for neutron induced reactions, for example, in neutron reacting with any nucleus giving alpha as ejectile. Okay, or neutron giving some kind of uh, 
gamma ray or neutron in interacting with some nucleus giving rise to proton for all these kind of reactions rate how to write down ok. As I said Maxwell Maxwellian averaged cross section Maxwellian averaged cross section because mostly at low energies and within a small narrow range only neutrons are inducing the reactions. So, that is why one can go for the Maxwell Maxwellian average cross section. So, same representation like Avogadro number and here it is not depending on the energy. So, that is a major difference between previous discussion and here ok and mostly at uh, some kind of uh, thermal energy range. Now, I am there is no velocity because I am taking the average ok in terms of energy. So, n a this, but at the same time I can write in terms of v by inserting v in the in the numerator and v t in the denominator ok and I am expanding here the expression like 0 to infinity velocity and probability of the velocity distribution sigma the cross section is mildly depending on the velocity at this stage ok. Earlier I have completely ignored, now I am taking the slight dependence whatever is there on the velocity. So, if you write in terms of I mean let me expand this 4 by root pi n a divided by v t ok, where v t is do you remember 2 k t divided by m 1 2 ok. This is the maximum of the velocity distribution right. So, 0 to infinity v sigma n cross section of neutron which depends on velocity even uh, slightly v by v t square e to the power of minus v by v t square d v. So, this is the expression for rate of the nuclear reactions induced by neutrons where v t is in general corresponds to some kind of a thermal uh, neutrons which has this narrow range of energies all right and after this neutron induced reactions we need to discuss photon induced reaction photon induced reactions so the next topic is photon induced reactions these are the two topics I told in the initial part of the lecture that I am going to discuss the mathematical representation of reaction rate when the reactions are induced by neutrons and photons. Now, why these photons are important? Because in majority of the nuclear reactions happening within the stars, the outcomes are the ejectiles are gamma rays. Now, reactions having positive q values reactions having positive q values they dominate at low temperatures. At low temperatures reactions with positive q values they dominate the nuclear reaction and if the reaction is represented like this 1 plus 2 giving rise to 3 plus 4. Now, 4 is replaced with gamma ray this kind of reaction is called as radiative capture radiative capture reaction radiative capture reactions. It can be induced by proton, it can be induced by neutron, but if one of the outcomes is gamma ray in addition to the reaction product then we call this as radiative capture reaction. Now, as the temperature increases as the temperature increases what will happen this gamma rays emitted in one reaction can induce a reaction with other nucleus may be same nucleus in reverse order how to write it I am trying to convey something interesting please pay attention here ok. So, if gamma reacts with some nucleus say 3 and gives rise to 1 plus 2 ok this is called as photo disintegration reaction photo disintegration 
reaction because it is induced by photon. So, I am using the word photo and gamma plus 3 basically you are getting a nucleus in excited state right. Gamma does not alter the proton number and neutron number once the nucleus 3 absorbs, but it undergoes excitation, it undergoes excitation. There is no change in the atomic number and mass number, right. But during de excitation, this nucleus most probably undergoes disintegration depending on the energy available. And where from this energy is availability is coming to picture? The gamma whose energy is coming from one of the previous reactions. And at high temperatures, there is a more probability for gamma to have more energy. So, slowly I am trying to explain this in terms of positive Q value and a negative Q value. You all know right, if the reaction has positive Q value, energy is released. If a reaction has a negative Q value, energy is to be supplied for the reaction to happen. Most of the reactions that is photo disintegration, they are the negative Q value reactions, right. And gamma when it reacts with the nucleus 3, after absorbing gamma, this nucleus 3 gets excited and during de-excitation, it may emit same gamma ray or depending on the energy levels available, it can emit multiple gamma rays. And the formation of new nucleides is via 1 plus 2. This is called as photo disintegration reaction, right. So, if I can measure the cross section of a radiative capture reaction, I can find out the cross section of the photo disintegration, vice versa. Somehow, if I have the facility to measure the cross section for photo disintegration reaction, that means incident uh, projectile is gamma ray, it is very difficult to obtain experimentally, though not impossible, okay. And reacting with the nucleus 3, it is giving same 1 plus 2. Now, the question is whether the cross sections of this forward and inverse reaction, forward and inverse reaction are they related to each other or not. Those things we will, I will discuss just uh, wait for some time in the next lecture I will discuss, okay. But now in this photon induced reactions, the question is very simple. What is the expression for reaction rate and what kind of changes you would like to make in the general reaction rate equation I have discussed in the previous lecture, okay. To, to summarize, in today's lecture I have discussed some of the salient features of the reaction rate equation when particles of non-identical nature are involved and at a different temperature scenario and I have shown you the values of kT starting from 1.3 keV, 40 keV, 140 keV starting from sun interior to supernova. Supernova is basically some explosion stages of the star at its uh, last stage, okay. Then I discussed the neutron inducer reactions, how to express reaction rates and then photon inducer reactions I just started, I will discuss more in the next lecture, okay. Thank you very much for your attention.